Hey guys, I'm Brian. Uh, my wife called me up yesterday and she said, Brian, I'm, I'm worried about busting TFRs. In the beginning, God created the earth and the heavens for humans to live and explore. Right away, however, the U.S. government was like, hold up there, God, and created the TFR. Over time, the restrictions grew more vast and varied. Over time, my wife's concerns about violating them also grew. I tried to explain to her why I don't understand her concerns. I said, well, first, you're not a pilot, and second, you pretty much sleep on every single flight we ever take. But she brings up a good point. What would you do if you did inadvertently find yourself inside restricted airspace? I'll be the first to admit I'm not the world's greatest pilot, even though I do on the URL. But I'm also not too proud to admit that I busted restricted airspace recently. In fact, a couple of times, and I'm, you know, human. I make mistakes. But so anyway, maybe it's happened to you, or maybe you always wondered what happens if you do bust a TFR. I filmed the flight, so I'll show you the clip. So maybe you can learn something from it. But anyway, I'll show you the uh, the, the clip of the flight. The morning air was cool, and the sun shined down through the clouds like a beacon calling me to the sky to once again taste the miracle of flight. No doubt this was going to be a beautiful day to fly. I decided this would be a good day to fly out and visit my good friend Spencer in Arizona. Spencer is also a pilot. He holds world records for some of his flying accomplishments. He has even taught me a trick or two. The more I thought about visiting my friend, the faster I began to drive to the airport. I arrived, and there she was, waiting for me. My 2001 Cirrus SR-22. A 310 horsepower chariot, ready to take me to... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, had something in my throat. So what I needed to do was I needed to do a quick pre-flight. I want to walk around the aircraft and make sure everything's safe. This is the best practice. I do it before every flight. Tubes. Everything leading up to the flight seemed perfectly normal. I had no concerns. Everything was going very smooth. My taxi, my run-up, everything was great. All right, so adding full power. Heels on the floor. All right, airspeed looks good. There's 70 knots. And rotate. Once I got to cruise, however, something seemed to miss. I looked down at my bright pad, and I noticed a TFR had popped up. Not a big deal. They tend to pop up. As I continued my flight, I noticed that another TFR had popped up in front of me. Then suddenly one popped up behind me, and then another, and another, and another. I began growing very concerned very quickly. Soon I found myself surrounded by TFRs, unable to get out in any direction. I thought and thought and tried to come up with a solution to get out of here without violating any of this airspace. It wasn't going to happen. So I picked a TFR, aimed my plane towards it, and I just went for it. Turns out this particular TFR was for an air show that was going on. This is when things sort of got weird. So now I've committed to busting airspace, and this is where you're going to learn an important lesson. If ever you find yourself in an aircraft somewhere that you aren't supposed to be, you need to default to what I call the win in Rome method. You didn't bust anything. You belong there. If you believe it, they'll believe it, and you're going to get off scot-free every time. I guarantee it. Airbus, Airbus, this is Voodoo One. Gonna come down to Show Center and do an Emmelman. We do not have a Voodoo One in the show today. What are your intentions? I really like to do an Emmelman. Wanna come down to Show Center and do an Emmelman? That's why I'm here for. That's why you pay me, Airbus. You will not do an Emmelman. I make the calls around here. Do you know who is the boss? Tony Danza. No, I am the boss. I am the Airbus. I direct the show here. You're Tony Danza? I am not Tony. All right, of course you're not. You will not come to show center. You will not do an Emmelman. What is your call sign? My call sign is, uh, 
Mitt, Mr. Furley! Mr. Furley's coming to show center, gonna do an Emmelman. Oh, Mr. Furley, sorry. Yeah, come on in. I will give you permission to fly down to show center, do two snapples, and deport the area to the south. Alright, let's roll. Alright, now four point roll. One, two, three, and four. What's pretty, but it'll do. Good day, Mr. Furley. At this point, I was feeling pretty good. Just a couple of rolls, and I managed to come out of that TFR unscathed. But then it happened. As I was departing the TFR, I found myself flying into another TFR. Only this one was different. This TFR had another TFR embedded inside it. This is what's known as an Inception TFR. This is when things got really weird. White smoke's pouring out of your manifold! Who's Doug? I think you're on guard. Who's Doug? What about a Cessna looks like splattered all over those rocks? Doug, not your head packed loose in your pressure cap. Land the plane, man! Land the plane! I don't want to land. Are, are you sure we're not on guard? Get well, wait just one second. I'm going to throw in full flaps and race this motorcycle. I think I can beat him as long as he stays on the main road. A bunch of things must have gone wrong if you listen to this. Whatever happened, I know you must be real scared. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to head the for hell, home. hell, Chappie? Maybe if I was you, I'd... Where are you getting my stuff, Chappie? God, Chappie, you suck! Stay out of my stuff! Things were starting to get pretty intense, and I knew I needed to step up my game if I was going to get through this series of TFRs. You're three quarters of a mile. Call the ball. Wait, what? Call the ball. Alright, I'm calling the ball now. Roger. Maverick has the ball. Actually, I've got the ball. What am I supposed to do with the ball? Traffic. Traffic. It's traffic. Cherokee 305 with you up crosswind. Runway 14 departs to the north. Six. Damn it. Bogies. I'm out of the TFR. So the point is you have to be able to adapt. It was my ability to adapt that got me through that safely. I didn't get in trouble and I didn't get hurt. And that's what matters. Hey, real quick, I just want to say something. So when I came up with the idea for this video, I started asking around to see who had access to an aviator helmet and O2 mask. So my friend and fellow pilot Shane Schmidt referred me to a gentleman by the name of Brad Carney. And Brad and I got to texting and then we met at Denton Airport and he said I could borrow this for this video, which was really cool. I didn't think too much of it. Um, well, it turns out that this helmet actually ejected out of an F-16. I mean, it had a, Brad was in it, under it. He was wearing it. You know how a helmet works. Anyway, um, so Brad flew F-16s for 20 some odd years and he was in Desert Storm and he actually ejected out of his F-16 at night on a training mission uh, when his engine came apart, and uh, this is what he was wearing when he ejected. So um, makes this really, really important. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible, and I uh, just really, really want to thank you, Brad, for letting me use this, and thank you so much for your service. Uh, really incredible guy, and I, I can't thank you enough for letting me borrow this. Also, I'd like to say thank you to my friend Spencer Suderman. He's an aerobatic pilot who flies a pits. He currently holds the world record for the most inverted flat spins. Um, there's a video of it on YouTube. If you look for Spencer Suderman, he's got so many fantastic videos. He's a really, really interesting guy. I, I could watch his videos all day. Um, and Spencer taught me how to do aerobatics in just about any aircraft without the use of really cheap and crappy video editing. No, so anyway, I, thank you, Spencer, for helping out with this. And uh, check out his videos. I'll try to link to his videos. I don't know if I can cross-link to other channels. 
I don't really know that much about how YouTube actually works, but if I can, I'll link to uh, some of his videos. He's got some really good ones. So anyway, thanks, and thanks everybody for watching, and uh, fly safe, guys. Well, that's the end of my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if the mood strikes you, please click on my friend Spencer's flying videos. I'm sure you will find yourself mesmerized by his daring feats of aerial showmanship. Also, you're sure to get a laugh out of his video about Pitt's pilots and the size of their wieners.